What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys the first of many post list deck profiles and that is true Draco in today's video. Now just before we get into the video I do want to say one thing for the next upcoming week or so I'm going to be doing daily deck profiles post ban list. I know the routine is usually like vlog and whatnot whatnot whatever but for the next week or so we're going to be doing some post ban list deck profiles so if you guys have any suggestions let me know in the comment section down below. Now I'm really excited to bring you guys this deck because Dynamite Knight just came back there too and this is one of the better cards in the deck. It searches you your traps. This deck is insanely powerful now with Dynamite Knight at two and especially with some of the floodgates that are really meta and powerful this format this deck could low-key be a sleeper for today's metagame i don't know maybe we gotta try it out but if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content again like i said the next week is going to be all post ban list content so you don't want to miss it you guys want to stick around for that i don't have nothing more enough to say i hope you guys enjoy and let's get into the deck profile all right, so just before we get into the deck profile here, I do want to say that if you guys want a full deck list, if you guys want a download link as well, make sure you're a Slifer Slacker member because you guys in the Discord and in the Instagram group chats, I always send the full deck list and the full download list so that you guys can get the deck and test it out yourselves without having to put each card in one by one. Okay, so that, with that being said, I'm really excited because True Draco is actually very playable this format, funny enough, and I think people are going to be sleeping on it, but I think this deck is insanely powerful just because Dynamite Knight came back to two. Because this card is back at two, there's so many more opportunities now to get to your trap card and search your trap cards which means that you don't necessarily have to draw them and this deck is a lot more consistent now you guys can see here i'm playing a 46 card main deck list and that's because desires also came back to two yes we're playing multiple cards that just came off the ban list and i think this is really really consistent this deck and it's really really powerful and i'm gonna show you guys some test hands after but i just want to go through the main deck of course we're not playing an extra deck in here so i'm gonna go through the main deck and i'm gonna show you guys some test hands because this deck i was testing it earlier and it's insane okay so we're gonna start things off here by playing two dynamite knight the true draco fighter the newest card off the ban list if you guys don't know this card when your opponent activates an effect you can search a trap card or activate a trap card directly from your deck which means that you always are going to have access to your true king's return and or your true king apocalypse just off of this card so that's why this is really important now that it's back at two then we're playing three ignis as well as two majesty maiden so we're playing seven monsters total usually in true draco i always like to play six but specifically because desires came back to two and you're probably going to see this card a lot more often that's why you need to be playing the seventh monster in my opinion because the only way this deck loses honestly is if you don't see a monster because if you sit on floodgates but you don't have a monster you have no way to beat your opponent right because you need a monster at least on the board to do some damage and so that's why we're playing seven monsters here i think it's a perfect number of monsters i really like this the majesty maiden also can get you into your dynamite which is very very powerful here and if you guys didn't know ignis searches you a spell card right so these are all really powerful in their own ways then for the spell cards we're playing three disciple as well as two heritage yes we only cut heritage down to two we're not playing three heritage anymore and the reason for that is because this deck of course wants to go first now the best part about this deck is it's really good going second as well because of course if you tribute over your trap cards you're also popping cards your opponent controls if you tribute over your spell cards you're popping set cards your opponent controls so it's really powerful of course going first and going second but of course you still want to go first and the thing is with the spell cards is they're really reliant on things to have already happened for before their effects can really be effective right so what i mean by that just quickly here is that Heritage, you need to have gotten rid of another card on your side of the field. So, if, for example, it could be another True Draco spell or another True Draco trap. Or if you had a monster on your side of the field, you would have to get rid of the one on your side of the field. Then you can get the Heritage to draw as many cards as you sent, right? Most of the time, especially because, and specifically because Diagram is at one, Heritage is not actually as powerful as it once was. Yes, it gives you the extra normal summon, so does Disciples. But the reason I'm playing three Disciples and two Heritage only is because Disciples, once you run through all your True Draco, cards disciples puts it all back for you and it helps you draw a card so that's why you still want to play three disciples i think disciples is a little more important especially in the grind game this is a grindy deck after all so especially in the grind game you're gonna need the disciples to keep putting back your cards into your deck and then the heritage is really good of course like i said but it's not as important as it once was so maybe in the future it can go back to three and three but right now i think two heritage is perfectly fine again it's always searchable with your ignis it's always searchable with your di diagram which of course we're also playing one draconic diagram here as well then for the draw cards we're playing three pot of duality two pot of desires as well as one card of demise this lineup is insane now i'll be honest with you i was never a fan of three duality i always like to play two but because we're playing 46 cards you really want to play the extra card because it helps you dig deeper into your deck it helps you fix hands sometimes so that's why duality is really good desires of course most of the cards that you guys are seeing in here we're playing three ofs 
So desires does not matter. Like when you activate this, it doesn't matter that you banish the 10 cards because most of the time you're still going to have one of these at least in your deck and then you're going to be drawing into the other ones, right? It doesn't matter if you banish a skill drain or banish a rivalry because you have three of each of them. Same with all your monsters. You're playing seven monsters now. So because you're playing seven monsters, it's very unlikely you're going to banish all your monsters. So that's why desires of two is great. And then card of demise, of course, because we're playing so many back row cards, you want to play card of demise. Then we're playing three return as well. Three apocalypse. Obviously, these cards are insanely powerful. You always want to summon on your opponent's turn because then you get these effects off especially if you're going first right you get these effects off to pop cards and then you can get apocalypse effect to half their attack you can get return effect to special summon from the graveyard these cards are insane you have to of course be playing three and three then one of the best cards in the deck and the card that really pushes the ceiling of this deck to the next level is forbidden droplet forbidden droplet is an insane card in this deck going first or going second of course it synergizes really well with your true draco spells and traps because if you activate droplet to send a trap you're gonna get a pop on your opponent's turn you're gonna you're gonna get to pop a card because these cards were sent from the field same thing with the spells you're gonna get to pop a back row or a set card with this so that's why i think these cards are really really good with droplet essentially what it does is obviously these cards are powerful on their own but with droplet it makes them even more reliable because now they're always going to be live you're always going to be getting the extra effects of them and droplet sending them means you're always going to have disciples essentially live for you because you're going to be sending your traps and your spells you're going to go disciples put them all back into your deck draw a card droplet just really increases the ceiling of this deck so so much i definitely think you guys should be playing this now this deck is actually very budget and very affordable really outside of the droplet so if you guys can't get your hands on the droplet don't worry i think you guys can cut this card completely you guys can play imperm here instead and imperm is a lot more budget now of course with the structure deck reprint so keep that in mind you guys can play Im infinite impermanence here instead of the droplet but i think droplet just if you want to take this to a competitive like regionals or ycs you need to be playing the droplet but of course if you guys don't have this like i said there are budget alternatives and perm is probably the best one chalice is another option for you as well and the best part about this deck is it doesn't lose to the typical things that the meta loses to right now think about like dd crow think about cards like ash like i mean sure you can ash one of the draw cards but okay and i'm still i'm gonna set four on you it doesn't really matter right think about the best cards that beat the meta decks in today's format it doesn't really beat true draco so that's why i think the deck is really cool then we're just playing floodgates like floodgates out the wazoo we're playing three skill drain three rivalry three goes in three anti-spell as well as three erupt now you guys might be asking me why are you playing anti-spell you're playing so many spell cards in the deck true but the really nice thing about this deck is first of all you're going to be activating a lot of your spell cards on your own turn before you even flip the anti-spell but if you need to activate a spell card later on in the duel all you got to do is tribute over the anti-spell or you can send it off the droplet now that you have ways to get rid of your anti-spell you can play around your own anti-spell which is very very powerful same thing happens with all these floodgates really the best part about this deck is you can always really just play around your own floodgates but specifically anti-spell i want to talk about because we're playing so many spell cards think about it you can diagram to pop it you can droplet to send it you can tribute over it there's just so many ways that you guys can get rid of this card so anti-spell is obviously a great card especially against the meta think about despia and think about a lot of the meta decks they're really reliant on their power spells and uh, yeah, anti-spell just makes it so that they can't use any of their power spells. And the adventure package didn't get hit, which means right, fateful adventure, all that stuff is still very live and it can't be used if you have the anti-spell on the board as well. So that's why this is very important. Then of course you're playing triple monarchs erupt because we're not playing the extra deck. These are six copies essentially of skill drain, which is very, very powerful. If your opponent out ends up outing one of them, you have the other one. This, this is just so powerful against today's meta. And then I like to play three solemn strike to end it off. Solemn strike of course is not a continuous trap, but it's really, really powerful because the thing with solemn strike is it makes it deck again like i said the one thing about the deck that's really good is that it can go first and going second solemn strike does that for you as well solemn strike is really good going first of course when you said it but it's also good going second so that's it for the deck it's 46 cards in the deck this deck is so so powerful i'm going to show you guys literally test hands and why this deck is just so powerful on its own so honestly here i'm just going to do it like this we're just going to press test hand and you guys are going to see how powerful this is so even something like this that doesn't seem that insanely powerful is actually kind of crazy because you're going to be setting two cards right and apocalypse lets you tribute summon on your opponent's turn so you're going to be able to set the apocalypse set the goes in and you could set one of the droplets you don't need to set both you can set one droplet honestly you could set the second one just to scare your opponent but you could set one the one droplet you'll have the ignis in hand what will happen is on your opponent's turn as soon as they like summon a monster or something like that you can flip your goes in but you can also flip your apocalypse activate the apocalypse effect to summon the ignis heat now as soon as your opponent activates a card effect ignis heat is going to get you to search a spell card which could either be your disciples or your heritage and now you're gaining advantage you have the ignis on the board you have a floodgate you have a pop with your apocalypse keep that in mind because once you summon the ignis and you tribute over your apocalypse apocalypse essentially is going to get to pop a monster your opponent controls and then of course on top of all that you have droplet all right so let's go one more test hand this test hand is just actually just as good if you think about it here because you have disciples you have heritage 
you have return and you have anti-spell so really what you can do here is you can actually just activate I'll, I'll show you guys a quick hand what you can do so you can activate this normal summon your majesty the nice thing about this now is majesty is going to get to search your dynamite if you need it then you can activate your heritage of course you have one in the graveyard now so you can use the heritage to draw a single card and okay that's even better actually because now what you can do is you can set your return and set your anti-spell and then you can even if you wanted to you can activate the heritage to just tribute over the ignis heat or you can just hold the ignis heat in your hand because what happens is you can set the return and then on your opponent's turn you can activate the return to tribute summon use the return to summon ignis heat and then return is going to get to pop a card your opponent controls right if you're playing against like a field spell based deck or a deck that needs their back row what you can do is you can use the return tribute over the heritage and now heritage is going to be able to target a spell or trap card in the field and destroy it which means you're going to be able to pop the field spell let's say that's necessary that's why even boards like this that don't look insane are actually still really powerful because you're putting up still multiple disruptions and get, keep in mind that these cards are going to get you more cards your majesty is going to get you into a monster your ignis is going to get you into a spell so these cards are going to get you into more cards so let's just do one more test hand to round off the video here and okay so this this hand is just as good you have the return you have a monster and you have a duality which here we can even pick what we want with the duality so we have a gozen in hand oh this is even better we just searched the apocalypse so now we have the gozen which is a floodgate for us which is very powerful and this is by the way these are considered like not the greatest of hands but you guys can see you have the Gozen match with the Floodgate, you have the Apocalypse and the Return, which can pop cards, and you have Ignis and Majesty Maiden, which you can just wait to do anything. You don't have to summon these right now. You can just wait on your opponent's turn. As soon as they commit to a monster, you can go Apocalypse, summon your Ignis and or your Majesty. In this case, I probably would summon the Ignis to get the spell card out. Tribute over the Apocalypse, summon the Ignis, pop the monster. Then once they activate another card, you're going to get to Ignis to activate a spell card. And then boom, like you guys have so much advantage to go here. You also have the Return. So if you could activate the Return, summon the Majesty Maiden, get another pop with the Return as well. Just so many disruptions and all that on top of a Gozen match. So that's why this deck is just so, so powerful. So here's like even another hand that you guys can see. Now you guys might be looking at this like, what's so great about this hand? Well, this hand's actually insane. You have three floodgates and you have your apocalypse. Three floodgates and apocalypse. Bro, you just have to set four and pass. As soon as your opponent does anything, you flip over your apocalypse, you summon your dynamite knight, you tribute over the apocalypse, apocalypse is gonna pop a card. If they activate anything, you get to search another trap and you still have three floodgates. This deck is crazy, bro. This deck is crazy. It's so simplistic, but it's crazy. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now, of course, keep in mind, we have to still see where the meta goes, how the meta shifts. We're assuming right now, or I should say I'm assuming right now, that the meta is going to be branded Despia, as well as the Brave package stuff. And because that's going to be the meta, the floodgates in this deck specifically were chosen because they were really good into that kind of meta. But of course, with the new ban list, you never know what could come up. You never know what could become meta. But we just have to assume that branded is still going to be one of the better decks. And we have to assume that Brave is still going to be one of the better decks, or Brave engine deck kind of things are going to be one of the better deck so anti-spell skill drain that kind of stuff is still going to be really good but if you guys have any suggestions that's how we get better together as a community let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have anything or any ideas that you guys want to recommend i appreciate every single one of you make sure to like the video and subscribe if you guys haven't already thank you guys all for watching remember a full week of post ban this content you don't want to miss out make sure you're subscribed for that and with that guys banco signing out peace